Hi, I'm Benj, Stewing Outdoors. If you've been watching my videos in the past, you may have seen that up the land, we've been having trouble with the deer, browsing off all the saplings that I've been planting, uh, even the hazel that I coppiced earlier this year, all the new growth of that's been browsed away. Uh, there's a lot of muntjac running through. We see more muntjac than we do even rabbit. So over the last four or five months, I've been watching how many deer are actually coming onto the land. We set up a camera trap and I've been checking it every two or three weeks just to see what's coming through. And it's apparent that we've got quite a problem with these muntjac. There's at least four different muntjac buck coming through that I can identify uh, through the different lengths of antler on the head. Uh, the does are a little bit more hard to uh, tell apart, but there's quite a few. So I've put a high seat up in the wood that I can shoot from, giving me a safe backstop as the hill runs up in front of me. And I went and sat there last Saturday morning, uh, got there just before sunrise, and just as the sun was breaking through, a little muntjac came past and I was fortunate enough to shoot it one shot straight through the heart, dropped it on the spot uh, and it's been hanging in my fridge for seven days now but now I need to get in there, take its skin off and get it butchered. Tonight we're going to have venison steak and chips for tea so I need to pull my finger out. So not only have we got lots of muntjac coming through the wood We've also seen quite a few roe deer, although not quite to the numbers that we see the muntjac. And another thing with the roe deer is that they really, really don't want to be near people. So whereas the muntjac still to this day are coming straight through the property, straight through the middle of the property, right past the pigs, they're, they're quite brazen. They don't really care about anything. Unless there's a human stood there, they may think twice then, whereas a roe deer, if it can scent you from a long distance, it's going to make sure that it keeps well away. So I'm not going to shoot the roe deer just yet until I notice that the numbers are becoming large. They're going to be left alone. But the muntjac, I think there's hundreds in the area. So I'm going to try hard over this winter to knock the muntjac numbers down. But it's not just killing for killing's sake. I'm going to eat every bit of the muntjac that we harvest and this is just another way of becoming self-sufficient. It's all right growing your own animals for slaughter and all your own vegetables but everyone likes to do a bit of foraging and picking out these deer from out the woods they've grown themselves on. I've had to put no time into them but they'll give me a good return in the meat. So we've got the deer fully undressed now, the skin is off. You can see it here hanging. Now I'll take it indoors and start breaking it down into the different cuts. The bit, the, the bit that we want for tonight though is off the back. The loin, we'll fry that up and we'll have that for our tea. But there's some mega meat in the legs. Unfortunately, a lot of the front end has been blown out by the bullet going through. This left shoulder is com almost completely intact, so we've got one front shoulder, two back legs, and the loin, and a few other bits that we'll take off and mince up and put into burgers. So we've stripped down half of the deer. As you can see, it's lost one of its legs. I've took out the loin off one side and the good shoulder. So what I'm gonna do is just break those down a little further into uh, some appetizing looking cuts. So here's the three cuts, well, the three pieces, back leg, front shoulder, and one of the loins. But you can see we need to do a bit more work on these yet, so let's crack on.
So we've got the loin fully dressed down now. Looking like some fine steaks to me. I'm no butcher, but you can pretty much work your way around these pieces of meat. Just follow the tendons and the, the joins in, in the muscle groups. And you can get a nice cut of meat. I've got to now break down the shoulder <clears throat> and the back leg. We're going to end up with some bits, bits and bobs like this. And they'll all get put through the mincer. And I'll mix them with some of the pork that we have left over from the pigs that we slaughtered last year. And they'll make some burgers. Right, so these are the steaks that we've cut out of the deer so far. It's now night time and everyone's a little bit peckish. The two big bits there off the loin and this piece is out of the leg and on uh, the beef this would be the silver side or the salmon cut silver side but I like to fry it up it's as good as the loin I think but what I'm going to do is just add some salt and pepper to these and give them a flash in the pan Plenty of salt and pepper, just like any steak. And don't forget to do both sides. And there it is, steak all seasoned, lovely. One thing that I do hate is a few deer hair that we keep getting on it. It's all part of the game. So they're all well seasoned. We're gonna preheat a pan, get it nice and hot, a bit of olive oil in there. Flash it. Get that. That's been in there about two minutes, if that. Rounding off lovely. some fine steak we'll let it rest for a couple of minutes <laughs> and then we'll carve it up does that look good Belle? <laughs> still a bit pink on the inside can you see that Looking delicious. Are you ready for some meat, Belle? Which bits do you want, Belle? That bit, that bit, and that bit. What about you, Charles? What are you having? I want that bit, that bit, and that bit, and that bit. Well, what bit am I going to eat then? That bit. Oh. Go on, Charles, dab in. Any good? Amazing. Amazing. What about Alf? Uh, I'll get his data. <laughs> How would it be cold? Definitely gonna have a new perspective. 
I've got like swans now. I'm just so hungry. I'm gonna take nearly all of it, Dad. Well, save me a little bit. I've I'm not had any yet. I'm yeah. I'll try, um, but I'm really hungry. And I'll be. Oh, they'll have a bit. <laughs> you greedy guts. So as you can see, that meat didn't last long at all. It was like feeding time at the zoo. We all enjoy a bit of venison. And although we've got a bit of a problem with lots of venison or muntjac running through our land, eating all the saplings that we're trying to grow, I don't mind harvesting a few. It gives us something good to eat. So from out that small muntjac, we've got the steak that we've eaten tonight. It wasn't a full meal, but it was good to eat. We've got enough steak for a proper meal for all five of us. We've got enough uh, stewing meat for probably two big stews uh, and a bag of mince. So we try not to let any of this meat go to waste. And that's all we've got time for on this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.